Welcome back everybody to another MoTime Reviews. In today's review, we're gonna be checking out the WF-1000 XM4 noise cancelling headphones from Sony. I've had these guys with me for a number of months now, utilizing them out while I'm mowing and gardening, etc. And I've had enough time with them to finally tell you my thoughts on whether these are the right noise cancelling earbuds for you and your work outside. So yeah, let's get into it. All right guys, so firstly, I'm gonna start with the price because that's, you know, generally uh, one of the driving factors of many people's uh, choices in choosing an earbud. So these I purchased for 380 Australian dollars. Now they are definitely on the higher side for pricing for earbuds and whether we, uh, you know, whether I think they're worth that, wait till the end to find out. But yeah, so that's it, $380. I'm sure you can find them cheaper somewhere on the World Wide Web, but at the time, um, you know, mid last year or something when I purchased them, they were $380 from JB Hi-Fi, I believe I purchased them. But why do they charge that sort of price? Let's take a look. So first of all, we'll probably just start with the general design of the earbuds. Now we'll pull them out and get, have a quick look. So there's the general design. You can see they're quite rounded and they're quite, uh, well, I would say a medium size earbud. Now I have used Bose and Jabra's um, over the years and this is my first Sony earbud pair and I would say they're probably in the middle of sizing between the Jabra and the Bose headphones um, which is fine they're a good size I don't mind the larger sizing purely because I have sort of big chunky fingers and um, to, to hold on to these when you're putting them in the ear, quickly pulling them out while you're mowing and whipping and doing your stuff outside having the larger earbud I find is a bit easier to hold on to. Generally, because you're outside as well, you don't really want to be dropping these or pulling them out when you're you know, standing over a drain out in um, on the road or you're standing in a landscape uh, wet pit or something like that, some mud and you pull it out and it falls and drops in there, then you're in trouble. So yeah, I find the sizing really, really good and they fit in the ear really, really uh, well in the way of sizing. The Jabra's a slightly small than that and when I had them I have done a review on them but when I had them um, you know they're smaller so they're a bit hard to a bit harder to handle you got to make sure you're really holding on to them um, you know so you don't drop them but uh, yeah so that's sort of the overall size now we'll talk about the actual um, earbud tips so with the earbud tips, these are a different design to the Jabra's and Bose headphones. So these have like this squishy earbud material where like a lot of the, um, you know, cheap uh, earbuds for noise cancelling, um, you've got to squeeze them and then put them in your ear and then they expand in your ear and hopefully, um, you know, fill the ring and the gap around your ear canal, completely, uh, you know, tightening off the um, gaps. So, <laughs> Living when working with these, um, you know, against the Bose and the Jabra ones, I would, I'd have to say I don't like this style. I completely understand and get why they've gone this way. Um, but just for what I do of in and out um, of the ute, you know, taking them on and off regularly on a daily occasion, it kind of got a little bit annoying you know, doing the squeezing around, doing the squeezing around, and then you've got to quickly stick it in your ear before it expands, because if you don't do it quickly, it's gonna expand, and then when you go to put it in, you're not gonna get a very good seal, which I've found a few times, um, you know, over the number of months I've been using these. So I'm not the biggest fan of the squishy tips. Squishy probably isn't the right word for it, but you know what I mean. So yeah, I didn't find them that great, but yeah, now, onto the other one. Now, just to mention, Jabra and Bose have like a plastic, uh, sorry, not plastic, a rubber style earbud, so you don't need to squeeze them. You just sort of slip them in to your ear and that's it kind of thing. And I never really had any issues uh, looking back with creating a good seal with them. Um, a lot of the times, those sort of earbuds come with different size ear tips. 
So you'll have small, medium, large, and of course you can just change it to what suits your ear the best. But yeah, so not a big fan of the squishy tips. It is getting a bit annoying having to squeeze them, squeeze them, and then quickly jam it in the ear to get that seal. So yeah. So the next thing I'll probably talk about specifically to the earbud, um, this is about the actual operation of the earbuds. So obviously when you pull them out of the case and put them in your ear, they will automatically connect with what you've connected it to. My, most of the time, 99% of the time, it's my phone because that's what's in my pocket and that's how I listen to podcasts and music and everything while I'm doing my work. But with the Sony, as opposed to the Jabra headphones I've had in the past or Sony, um, sorry, Bose ones I've had in the past, they both came with buttons on the, on the outer edges to click in the way of to turn volume up, answer a call, pause anything, etc. Where the Sony ones are different is they are touch sensitive um, pads on top here that you, yeah, just touch in order to do something. Now, Using the previous earbuds from other companies um, as opposed to this, I'm not a big fan of the touch sensitive pad. Now, again, I am talking specifically for the work I do, which is outdoor work, uh, mowing, you know, whipping, all that sort of stuff. So um, when it comes to me, you know, my phone going off because I get phone calls during the day from clients or new, new customers calling in, etc. Um, you know, I stop to answer those calls, hence why I use these sort of um, headphones. Um, but I, I've, I've found it a bit annoying to use a sensitive earbud. Um, it sounds really stupid, but when you're sort of busy and you're holding your brush cutter or, or whatever, whatever you're doing, and then the phone rings and you go to press it, you kind of like not... Like sometimes it takes more than one go to press the sensitive button in your ear. Like there's nothing to feel for it. It's not a physical button that you can just push and you know you've pushed it, you know you're gonna answer the call. Times where this has come in and I've like trying to press it and I'm not hitting it correctly, maybe it's just, you know, I'm just off with putting my finger to my ear, but you can't see your ear. So you can't exactly know sort of thing. Could be just me, but that is definitely something I found a little bit annoying with the Sony earbuds is the, the touch sensor buttons on the outside. I much prefer an actual button um, to do that because there's times that I've tried to press it, it hasn't gone, I'm sort of juggling things, I've missed the call and it's just annoying because then you've got to stop, pull your phone out, call the person back or whatever sort of thing. It's just, yeah, time consuming. So yeah, not a big fan of the touch sensitive buttons on the outside, but yeah, let's move on. All right, so the next thing we'll probably talk about is probably why Sony charges what they charge and probably their best selling um, feature for these headphones. And that is of course um, the sound quality. Now, yes, I would say these are definitely produced the best sound quality I've heard um, in the, all the headphones I've used over the years. Now, I'm just talking specifically about earbuds, um, not the actual big headphones that have a loop that go over your head. I always use earbuds, so that's what I'm referring to. But yeah, I definitely, uh, for sure, I think Sony do do the best sound quality so far in the head uh, earbuds I have used. But whether that warrants like an extra $100, $150, depending on what you're paying, but they are quite a bit dearer than something like their competition, which is the Jabra Elite 7 Pros, I think, are the latest ones out at the moment that compete with this, and they're like $100 cheaper. So for me, you know, that that's whether or not for you how important that is the sound quality like it is important sort of thing but again given my job with the brush cutter screen and it's ringer off next to me and 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 the mower etc um sound quality isn't like super high up there on the list like all the ones i've previous used just had just as good as sound quality i listened to my music and i sang along with it or i listened to a podcast no dramas sort of thing you know it wasn't like oh that's terrible sound coming through there. It was never an issue, so yeah. But in saying that, yes, that is a plus for the Sony. They are excellent sound quality. So again, noise cancelling on this Sony Say is one of the best. 
And yes, I would tend to agree, yes, it is really good noise cancelling, but it only comes down to also the seal again you get in your ear. If again you're not getting a good seal, then noise is gonna get through into your ear canal and you're gonna hear it and the noise cancelling isn't gonna work as effectively. And that's probably where um, the noise cancelling, you know, again, is great as long as you've got the seal correct in your ear. Um, it's very obvious if it isn't sort of thing, especially again with a screaming brush cutter next to your ear or a mower or your ride on or anything going on. It's a loud noise. You're definitely going to notice it um, coming through the, the cracks in your ear that's not sealing. So yeah, noise cancelling is great when they seal, uh, but not so great when it's not sealing. So yeah. Battery life. Let's move on to battery life. So the case is actually a battery, um, like it's a, there's a battery inside the case. So you charge the case, which generally takes about three hours to charge, um, you know, from your USB port or whatever plugged into power. But then when you go on the road, like I am, I'm out all day, um, then the earbuds, the case holds about one and a half hours charge on the road to charge the earbuds, earbuds, earbuds if they go down. So yeah, plenty of time. There's definitely not been a day where I have run out of battery. These things are absolutely brilliant in battery life. And again, I use mine all day, in and out, in and out, all the time sort of thing. So yeah, great battery life for sure. Now. Talking about battery life, when you're actually in use with these, you generally will get about 12 hours with noise cancelling off, and you get about half of that. So you get about eight hours utilizing noise cancelling, which again, eight hours is a general, you know, normal working day of most people. Some of us guys and girls outside in the lawn industry might be doing, you know, 10 to 12 hours, or might be doing less. But either or, eight hours is easily enough time um, you know, to, to use your headphones all day and then charge them again if you need to when you get home. But yeah, definitely battery life are fantastic on the XM4 1000. So yeah, definitely a tick there. All right, so let's talk about water resistant now. So yeah, the Sony 1000 XM4s are an IPX4, which water resistant, which means they're fine for sweat, or light rain or anything like that. You definitely can't put them in your washing machine as I've done in the past with my Jabras, um, or definitely make them fall into a puddle of water and leave them there for a while. They won't work after that. They are water resistant, not waterproof. So just bear that in mind when you are looking out for headphones. Um, IPX is basically the rating of water resistant. All right guys, the Sony earbuds, do I think they're worth the money? Look, in the end, I think not. If you can get a pair of earbuds that are cheaper, like the Jabra's, etc., like I said, then I definitely would just go with them. Now, given the landscape environment we work in and how hostile it is with weather, and you know, sitting on a ride on or a stand on or push mower, whatever you do, they might fall out and you might need to change them often if you break them. So, you know, having the Sony's, I mean, you do have insurance and warranties and stuff, but I'm pretty sure they're not gonna warrant that if you mow over it and spit it out and chew it up. Um, they might not cover that. So just bear that in mind, but yeah, they're not like, not a cheap replacement was what I'm trying to say. So in the end, I don't think they're worth the extra hundred or so dollars more than Jabra's and the previous ones I've used. But for me, working in this environment and utilizing these sort of headphones, uh, earbuds, um, I don't think it's worth the extra money. You can certainly get something that does just as good a job with the cheaper price. So yeah, just my thoughts and opinions. If you agree or disagree, let me know down in the comments below, or let me know in the comments below what you use for um, your ear protection and noise cancelling when you're out mowing and whipping and whatever you're doing. So yeah, let me know in the comments. 
All right, my friends, so that's my thoughts and opinions on using the WF-1000 XM4 wireless noise cancelling headphones from Sony while outside mowing and brush cutting and doing the work we love to do outside. So I hope you enjoyed the review. If you have any more questions regarding the earbuds or anything else, please leave them in the comments below and make sure to click the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed this review. I've got more reviews on other earbuds, etc., coming. Um, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that. But yeah, that's it. I've got to put these down, get back to my work, uh, and get back out to the lawns and gardens and what I love doing. So yeah, as always, guys and girls, I hope you are staying well mentally and physically, and we'll see you legends in the next video.